Hey guys! Today is the big day! We are drawing a realistic cute puppy. Before we begin, I created a new animal fur and hair brush set, which you can download along with the color palette in the description below. Another file included in the download is the sketch of our puppy. I'll start sketching it from scratch in a few moments. But if you like, you can import the ready sketch to your Procreate and start your drawing from after the sketching part. All these files are free to download. Alright, let's get started. The canvas size is 2000 by 2000 pixels. In the first part of our tutorial, we will be sketching the puppy for future coloring and texturing. Let's take advantage of the new Procreate feature that can be found in the Canvas tab. This is the reference feature. I will switch it to Image and click Import. Let me zoom it and I will select the black color from the disk. Normally I would use Narrow the Pencil for sketching, but it might be barely seen on the video, so I will pick the Studio Pen from Inkin. I'll start from drawing the puppy's head. Before you ask, this cute white fluffy thing you see on the corner is my little cat. Please meet Snow, the cutest cat ever. I've been busy all day today and couldn't give him as much attention as he needs. So now he sits near my iPad and refuses to go away. If you feel that it's really hard for you to sketch, you can totally go for tracing. Just open the photo of the puppy, lower its opacity a little bit and create a layer above it. Or you can totally skip this step and use the sketch I provided in the download files. On this stage we don't have to draw the fur or anything. We are only building the shape and dividing the sketch into segments of different colors. I think I learned sketching this way when I took technical drawing classes back when I was in college. Now this may surprise you, but I'm actually a chemical engineer by profession. And after my engineering studies, I wanted to do something more creative and ended up working as a full-time freelance graphic designer. Anyway, as I already said, I'm totally fine with people who trace the photos. I don't think it's cheating, especially when you are just learning how to draw. It can be even helpful. For example, when you trace, you can see and memorize the approximate positions of the eyes, nose, etc. If you have a good visual memory, it can help you learn. Also, it can't be considered cheating, because even if you trace, you only make a sketch this way. You do the rest of the work on your own. This is coloring, shading, texturing, detailing. This is my opinion. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. But I often see many people arguing about it in social media. Let's finish this lower part. As you see, it isn't very accurate. We'll fix it when painting. I'll now draw this left part slowly, bit by bit. Going down carefully. I'll divide this little part here. I will divide the head into a few big parts where it has different colors. In case you don't want to spend time on sketching and can't wait to proceed to the next stage, you can skip this part and go directly to coloring stage. And you can use the sketch that I attached in the link together with the color palette and new brushes. After you download it, all you need to do is open Procreate, go to Actions, click on Add, and pick the sketch file from the gallery. 
I will try to add as many details to the sketch as I can, because we will be referring to it a few times while painting. And it will make the process a bit easier for you if you don't feel confident while drawing so far. I will continue working on the sketch. Let's separate the white part of the fur with the black one. Let me move the reference a bit closer and zoom it. I want to sketch the eye. I will make the drawing same size to be more accurate. I wish you could see my cat now. He's been washing his face for good 5 minutes. And he just has to do it sitting on the table near me. Let's draw these light reflections. I think like all other cats, he follows me wherever I go and whatever I do. He has to see me and know what I'm doing. This is so cute. Let's draw the second eye as well with all details inside it. And I will also try to repeat the nose shape. It will go this way on top. Then this pointy tip at the bottom. I will draw the line in the middle of it and two round nostrils. Let's also sketch the mouth. Let's see what we have left. There are these outlines around the eyes, which have a different color. I will draw them too. I think the sketch looks similar to the reference photo. We will start painting on our sketch now. Let's begin with changing the background color into blue. To see the sketch better, I will alpha lock it. Select white color from the color disk and click on fill layer in the layer menu. I'm creating a new layer and placing it below the sketch. Let me zoom in the reference image and move the canvas a little down. We will start coloring the puppy. To make it easier for you, I made a color palette that you can download if you haven't yet. So let's pick the first light color. And I will be using medium brush from airbrushing. I will paint the white areas according to the reference image, starting from the forehead. Here I will lower the brush size a little. What we are doing now is actually the easiest part of the drawing. Making a furry animal can be time-consuming, even if we don't paint it hair by hair. 
so you will need patience. Believe me, the result is worth it. I'm following the lines of the sketch, in which we visually divided the entire shape into zones of different colors. In my opinion, it will make the process easier later, when we will start applying fur brushes. As you might have noticed, I'm a big animal lover, and I really enjoy drawing all kinds of animals in different styles. For instance, on my Instagram page, you can see lots of cat drawings. A few of them are realistic commission portraits. Once you master realistic portrait painting technique, it might become one of the ways to monetize your art. Now let's change the color into second, which is brown. To paint on these areas above the eyes. I will be changing the brush size all the time to be more accurate on the borders and paint faster on the middle areas. At the same time, trying to follow my sketch. Finishing painting on this side and going to another one. I will pick the color from here to fix some small gaps. Let's pick the third color, that is dark blue, and paint around and under the eyes. I will paint the entire area and we will define the eyes later. Doing the same on the opposite side. Well, these areas are supposed to be dark as well. I need to lower the brush size to paint there. I feel like I'm painting a coloring book and I'm really enjoying it. The white lines of the sketch have some thickness value. Let's not forget it. So we should paint on them too in order not to leave gaps between the colors. Let me paint this area too, with a lower brush size. Now let's go for this light beige color and paint on the sides of the cheeks. Of course, all colors will be blended later, but still, I like to be accurate and I'm trying not to cross the white outlines of the sketch and not paint on the areas where another color is supposed to be. But of course, we can always fix it with the brush easily, by switching between the colors. Let's paint on the second cheek as well. We can see that our puppy is getting some shapes already. Ok, next goes this dark grey color. I will paint here a little on the side, making the size bigger and on top of the head, where the white fur meets the dark one. Then switch to a lighter shade of grey and go to the right from here and a little down on the ear. I 
After that, we should pick this very dark color, almost black, and paint on this side of the ear. We are defining the place for future shading. Let's switch to a lighter shade and continue painting on the rest of the ear. When creating this color palette, what I did is I handpicked the colors directly from the reference image. And it's the best way to make your drawing look very similar to the original image. I think I will pick this color again and darken this small part here. With the same color, I will paint another ear on the side closer to the head. For me, this painting is really like a therapy. It's very relaxing. Let's select this color and paint here on top of the ear. On the lower part, I will use this dark gray, just following the sketch, changing the size where needed. I think I should add a little more white here. Let's go to the color palette and grab this dark color to paint the eyes now. I will draw these circles. The first one and then another one on the opposite side. Let's switch to the light gray and paint the area around the nose. Also define the place for the mouth. Then go back to the previous color and paint the nose according to the sketch. We will shade it later, of course. For now, we are only applying basic colors. Now we have a few big areas left to paint on the body. First, let's go with this dark gray. I will paint this small area on the fur below the ear. I think I will go even a little down here. Sometimes we can look at the reference image and change the sketch a little. Then switch to the shade of brown and paint inside this area. Remember everything that I told you about the thickness of white lines, the brush size, etc. We can pick the dark color right from this part of the ear and darken the piece under the ear on this side of the body. I will change the color into gray. Here it looks a bit lighter on the reference image. Ok, let's grab this light color and paint the biggest area on the chest. I can totally make the brush size bigger to make it faster.
I don't have to be very precise on the lower part but I will make the brush size smaller to paint on top of it final touches here and I will make the brush size even smaller for this small part that we left here I think we can use this color from the last column Let me increase the size a little. Finally, let's add a color here on the neck. Let it be this one. It's the shadow that comes from the head on the neck. Looks like the puppy is already shaded a little. Ok, I think this part has a different color as well. I will pick this light brown. Again looking at the reference image. And adding colors here and there. Let's see what else we can do. Let's add a bit of color around the eyes. It will be this one. I'm gonna paint inside the areas that I defined while sketching the first eye and here comes the second one. This part of the drawing is almost ready. Let's see what's next. Let's turn the sketch layer off for now. And we will proceed to the third stage of our painting. What we're gonna do is smudge all the borders between colors inside the shape as well as all its outer edges. I will be doing it on the layer with our painting. So let's go to the smudge tool. And here is my newly created fur brush set. We should pick the brush called soft fur. It will work best for this purpose. I will set the opacity to 75% first and the size to 7%. Let's try it out. Ok, the size can be bigger. I will start smudging the edge here on the forehead, following the direction of hair growth that we see on the reference photo. It's always good to look at it from time to time and I really love the new Procreate feature that allows us not only see the reference but also pick the color from it. I'm making lots of brush strokes and we are getting this feeling of fur texture and fluffiness. Working on the brown edge as well. Moving towards the right side of the head. Ok, let's try smudging with full opacity. I think it works much better this way and definitely goes faster. Let's continue smudging the outer edge of this grey area. Here the brush strokes are shorter. We only need to achieve the fluffy look. And on the white area I will make them longer. I was requested to demonstrate my approach to painting realistic pet portraits since a while. I knew that this type of video tutorial would be much longer, as realism is based on painting lots of details. And what's more important is the usage of very specific brushes. Different artists have different approach. I developed my own technique and created my own brushes, which I am happy to share with you. I will explain the key moments during the painting process. Once you learn it, 
you will be able to paint any kind of dogs and any breed. It took me time to pick the reference photo, because I had a few criteria. First, I wanted it to be very cute. Then I wanted it to be multicolored and have different kinds of fur, so that I could show a few of my brushes at work. For better blending of colors, we can make strokes in both directions, going back and forth. We can also expand or narrow the colored area down if we follow different directions. Same as we were doing when smudging the fur on the ship in the cute ship tutorial. If you got the idea, you can continue working independently until all the edges are smudged and all colors within the shape are blended and have the furry texture. Ok, let's go back to our smudging process. This is also very relaxing and therapeutic, but it requires some patience and dedication if you really wish to master the style. Let's be careful while smudging the area close to the eye. I'm not applying too much pressure and making the strokes in two directions for better blending of colors. Let's smudge the brown edge too. Of course, what we are doing now is a rough work. All the main details will be added using fur brushes and I can't wait to show you how they work and which brush is better to be applied in which case. By the way, there are a few default Procreate brushes that can be used to paint animal fur or human hair. They can be found in the drawing section, also under touch-ups and organic. But when I was designing my painting technique, I realized that they don't meet all my needs and I can't get the desired effect. They may be good for drawing semi-realistic textures or cartoon style, but not for realistic painting. So I studied the fur structure, checked plenty of dog photos and pictures of other animals, and I still keep on working on the brushes. What we are using in this tutorial is only a small part of what I plan to create. They are enough to paint a realistic dog or puppy portrait, for example, and they can be used to paint human hair as well. But I will add more brushes of different types of fur and hair in this set. It's not an easy process and not fast, but as I said, I keep on working and hope to finish it soon. Look how fluffy is our puppy getting. I like it more and more. It's always nice to see the progress and I understand if you want to see the finished painting quickly, but it may take up to 3-4 hours or even more when you are painting it for the first time. But if you practice, the drawing time will go down, of course.
let's be careful when smudging near the eye. And I will go down to the left. Let's also smudge this border and the edge of the head. I'm making the strokes to both directions. And here I will make them longer. Are you enjoying this tutorial so far? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I actually started a new Patreon page recently. I'll continue posting video tutorials here on YouTube and share free brushes as always. Nothing will change about that. On the other hand, on Patreon, I will post in-depth tutorials like this one, exclusive brush packs and more patron-only content to help improve your art. If you like my videos and brushes and want to take it to the next level with more tutorials like this one, consider becoming a patron. You can find my patron link at the description below. Meanwhile, I will continue smudging on the lower part of the head and on the side of the cheek. Let's also smudge the grey area around the nose and on the mouth. I'm gonna smudge a bit more on this side. Here the strokes will get longer again. And on this border I will smudge to both sides. The puppy is getting more and more fluffy. We need to smudge the lower edge going outwards. Left side needs to be smudged as well. And I will also work on this border between the brown part and this light one. The head's lower edge should be smudged properly to look more separated from the neck. Of course, after we add fur textures with the brushes, it will look completely different. But for now, we are creating a good base to work with. Long strokes on this border. And let's smudge the shadowed part under the neck very carefully. I will do it making the strokes downwards. Let's work more on the ear. And I will fix some parts here and there.
adding more fluffiness at the bottom of the chest. I just want to make it look pretty and cute already at this early stage. Ok, we need to paint this blue corner inside the eye. I will turn on the sketch layer, pick the color from the reference and grab the medium brush from airbrushing. Let me paint it quickly following the sketch. After that I don't need it. I will adjust it slightly. Let's see if we smudged everything properly. Well, I think this part needs some more work. And the white fur here. I will just add a few longer strokes all over the white border. And we are done here. So we got this fluffy smudged base. And before we continue working on the fur, I suggest we shade the nose. Let me zoom both the drawing and the reference and place them side by side. I will pick the color from the light part of the nose right from the image and go to select the soft brush from airbrushing. I will lighten the upper part of the nose a little. Let me actually move them a little down, so that I could see better what I'm doing. I will lower the brush size and paint on the side. We can even go to layers and toggle the sketch layer to give us a prompt. Well, I think we can find a lighter shade to make the highlights more visible. If you can't find the suitable color on the reference, there is always a way to pick the color manually from the disk. So the brush is in full opacity and I'm painting on the nose on the light areas, looking at the reference. Adding this color around the nostril carefully and around this line that divides the nose into two parts. On this side, it will go a little up and around the nostril as well. After that, I will go even lighter. And I think I can totally pick the color from the light part of the head. I will just lower the opacity. And add more highlights with this color, looking at the photo. Sometimes you can improvise if you think you can make it better than on the reference photo, but at the same time try to keep it as similar as possible, especially if you are making a commission portrait. I'm changing the size working on smaller or bigger parts to make the drawing more accurate. I will definitely highlight this big area on top. and highlight the second nostril too. Go a little to the right. And a bit of light here. Let's turn the sketch layer off and see what we got. Well, I think it looks good enough. We should go for smudging. 
I will select the soft brush for this purpose and start smudging inside the nose shape to blend the colors and make softer transitions between them. I am trying to find the best combination of brush size and opacity. Ok, I think this one will work for me. The size is small enough and opacity is high, but not 100%, a bit lower than that. I will blend all the colors very carefully. Let's not hurry. Better make more strokes with lower pressure. This way the colors will be blended better and it will look more natural. Also, it's important to follow the right direction when smudging. I am making tiny circular moves along the edges where one color meets another one. If at some point you think that you smudged too much, you can paint over using the brush with needed color and start smudging once again. Even while smudging, you can introduce the colors where you think you forgot to paint before smudging. Or we can also widen or narrow the color if we smudge in a certain direction. After we finished working inside the nose shape, we should also go along the outer edge around the shape and smudge it slightly. A few more touches inside the nose. I would say, use your intuition, common sense and fantasy, but don't forget to look at the reference photo while painting a realistic pet portrait. I will smudge carefully around this middle line and go back to the upper edge. I don't want to damage the grey area that we smudged with the fur brush earlier. But even if we do it accidentally, it's not a big issue, because very soon we will work on this big white area around the nose with fur brushes. Let's blend this white color with the grey nearby. Finally, I will create a new layer above the painting and go to touch-ups to find the old skin brush. The brush is at full opacity, but I am drawing slightly inside the nose shape. When it's done, I will go to layers and change the blending mode to overlay. After that, we can see better what else needs smudging. So we can go back to our painting layer and make a few adjustments. I will smudge these light spots a little. Go back to the soft brush and paint it over again. Then smudge. Well, I can soften this transition a bit more. Let me check. Looks fine now. I was asked a few times how to shade black objects. One of the ways to do it is exactly what we are doing now. If the object is initially black or almost black, we can only go with lighter shades. In our case, we are using grey and white colors to highlight some parts of the nose. And we are using smudge tool to blend the colors within the shape. Welcome to the next stage of the drawing. In this part, we're not gonna use the color palette anymore. We'll be picking colors right from the drawing. 
Let's begin with forehead. I will pick the color with my finger and finally go to the fur brush set and select the dog fur highlighter. The opacity is at 100% and I will set the size to 43-44%. Let's start making the strokes from bottom to top on the forehead. Due to one of the brush settings, we are getting a lighter color. I'm looking at the reference and following the direction of hair growth according to that. We can change the angle to get this messy look. I will go down and draw between the eyes. I'm not pressing too much on the pencil. Go into the sides. Now let's pick the grey color from top of the head. I will go to the brush set and change the brush to dog fur shader. Also lower the size and opacity. This brush has the same fur structure, but it gives the opposite effect. The strokes we make with this brush give us a darker color. That's why I lowered the opacity before using it. In full opacity it would be too dark. I will go with this brush over the gray area. This way darkening it and adding the fur texture. But I'm still leaving some gaps with gray color, not painting it completely. It is fine to change the brush size for a few bigger strokes. Also we should be careful on the parts where gray color meets white. Here I'm gonna lower the pressure even more. Let's pick the light color again and go back to previous brush, that is a highlighter. I will add more hairs here. Next I want to work on this dark part around the eye. I will pick the color from here and select the shader. Let me zoom both images so that I could be more precise. I am darkening this area, making strokes from the eye outwards, trying different sizes of the brush, always referring to the original photo. With this brush we are creating kind of under fur. And we will work more on it later. I'm not pressing too much and as you see the opacity is not 100%. It is a bit lower. Let's add a few strokes here on top. After that I will select same fur brush but with the highlight effect. With this brush I will paint mostly on the outer edge of the original grey shape, highlighting the tips of the hairs made by the previous brush. The strokes also go a little outside this shape on another color to blend these two colors better and make the transition between them look more natural. As you see we have a dark color selected, but it gets light when we make the strokes. This way we can pick the color once and then change the brushes only to get darker or lighter shades. I find it very handy. After we made this base with dog fur brush I will go to the set again and select another kind of brush. This is soft fur shader. It has a different fur structure with fine hairs, but same shading effect. So I'm going with this brush following same direction, adding more fine hairs on top of the previous brush. Let's 
then I will pick same brush as a highlighter, lower the opacity and size a little. As you see, we have same color selected, but it also gets lighter when applied with this brush. I am painting mostly on the tips, still following the direction of fur growth. It's really important. I will go slightly over this dark area to give it more of a furry look. And add more of highlight to the tips for better blending of colors. Let me switch back to shader and darken this small area a bit more. Go a little up to blend the colors even better. I think you already got the idea of how my brushes work. So I have three types of brushes of each kind. One in normal mode, another one shader that is set to multiply mode and that makes darker strokes. And the third one, highlighter, that is intended to produce the lighter strokes and that is set to screen mode in the brush settings. If you watched any of my tutorials, you might have seen that I use this method quite often. Instead of picking darker or lighter shades from the color disk, I create a layer set to multiply mode first, and then another one above that is set to screen mode, but I don't change the color itself. So I was thinking, why not use this cool feature in brush making? Then I tried it, and it really worked. With these brushes, you just pick the color directly from the drawing, or even from the reference image and the brushes will make the main job for you. I continue working following the same scheme, picking the color from this brown area and first painting on it using the soft fur shader brush, darkening some parts of it and following one direction, from left to right. Let's darken the small area on the edge. This part of the fur looks soft on the reference image, so I am not using the other brush that we applied on the dark spot, I mean the dog fur brush. I begin straight from the soft fur in the shader mode, then switching to the same brush in highlighter mode and lightening the entire area, adding the furry texture with fine hairs. We have a little puppy here, who has more of soft fur, so most of the time I will be using this kind of brush, but if you are painting an adult dog, you can use more of dog fur brush, and then add the soft fur here and there for more realistic furry look. Let me pick the color from this light part and paint a bit more on this transitioning area. In some cases, we can also go for the smudge tool, set the same kind of brush that we were using. I will smudge these transitions just a tiny bit. Ok, let's pick the brown color again and go back to the shader brush. I will darken the area here on top. And on the edge. Let's leave it for now 
and switch to the ear. In the brush set, I will grab the dog fur shader and pick the color from this part of the ear. We can see some curly hair on the ears, so I will try to reproduce it by turning my pencil while making the brush strokes. The color is getting darker due to the brush mode again. I will darken this area close to the head according to the reference photo. Let me check how it looks from distance. Ok, let's make a few more strokes here. My main purpose in this tutorial is not to make you repeat after me every single stroke, to get exactly the same looking puppy in the end. What I want is to explain you the principles of work and show the technique I designed in all its details. After we made this base with the fur, I am going to change the brush into soft fur highlighter. And I will create these fine hair textures following the curly hair shapes that we made with the previous brush. I can also control the brightness of the color by lowering or increasing the pressure on the pencil. I'm switching between the highlighter and the shader in order to get the desired effect of natural realistic fur. I don't aim to make my drawing look 100% as the reference photo. It's just a reference that gives me prompts of the location of shadows and highlights. I also used it to pick the colors for the color palette, that's all. Even if you are working on a commission, you don't really have to make it look exactly like the photograph. Yes, you must keep the resemblance. Use mostly same colors and try to keep the fur pattern because it's unique for each animal. But you can also improvise a little. It's totally fine. Ok. I will pick this light brown color from the reference and change the brush to highlighter. I'm making lots of short brush strokes to highlight this part of the ear. If you feel that you added too much of this or that color, you can always fix it with the smudge tool, don't forget about it. It's one of the coolest features that Procreate has and many other drawing apps don't have. Sometimes we can see the fur that looks very soft on the photo, like you can't distinguish the hairs even. In this case, using the smudge tool is also the key. As you see, I am more improvising on this ear, but I will still get the cute puppy drawing in the end. You can totally go with your own fur pattern. We are just learning the basics here and trying to anchor the painting technique for realistic pet portrait. Well, I can see some major strengths on the ear that pop up randomly. I think we can make them with the dog fur highlighter. I will paint on top of the soft fur textures. and add a few more dark ones with the dog fur shader. Sometimes I can get carried away 
and work for hours on one ear. But we can totally stop here. You can always go back to it after the painting is finished. Ok, let me pick the light color from here and go for the dog fur highlighter. I will just paint a few strokes on this side. So we already tried some of the brushes and it's high time to paint the eyes. Let me move everything a bit closer and zoom. I will make the drawing and the photo same size. Create a new layer above the painting. Let's pick the color from the slow light reflection right from the reference. And we can use our sketch as the guide. The selected brush is Studio Paint from Inkin. I will paint this shape inside the eye. Then I will pick this light blue from the upper light reflection and paint this small upper shape. There is one more here that we didn't sketch. I will also pick the color from it and paint near the blue one. Let's go to the layer and alpha lock it. With the same color I will paint on the side of the lower reflection. Let's pick the color from this blue one. Go to the disk and pick a darker shade. I will paint on top of the shape. Go to the disk again and pick the white color by double tapping. Paint on the lower part of it. Let's unlock the layer and I will draw a white dot near the blue shape. Ok. Let me try this. Duplicating the layer, going to the upper one and locking it again. Going to Gaussian Blur, layer and I will slide to around 2%. Just to blend the colors inside the shapes. After that, go into the lower layer that is not locked and also blur it, around 4%. Ok, let's merge these two layers. We better blend them manually using the smudge tool set as the soft brush. I will lower the brush size and start smudging all the edges of our shapes inside the eye. Changing the opacity and size of the brush, finding what works best. We can also change the form of the reflections using the smudge tool, working in different directions. Let's also smudge the lower reflection on the edges to blend the colors with the base color of the eye. Already looks much better. Let's continue working. Smudging in different directions and being careful with the brush size. I will also blend the two colors here in the middle. The blue shape needs smudging too. I will first blend the colors inside, then work on the edges. We now see that while painting the eye, Gaussian Blur couldn't help much. Manual smudging works best in this case.
Ok, let's pick the blue color from the corner of the eye. And we can already merge the layers. I will paint here first to remove the hair. Go to the disc for a lighter shade of blue. I will lighten the areas here in the corner and under the eye. Let's find some shade of green on the reference to paint on top of the eye. Then go for the smudge tool and blend the colors that we just added, smudging very carefully with the low brush size. Smudging the upper line, then the lower one, from both sides, inner and outer. Doing it very carefully, trying not to damage the round shape of the eye. I haven't set the opacity of the brush to 100% on purpose. Although we have to work a bit longer and make more brush strokes, this way the colors will be blended better and we will get more accurate look. Same goes for the lower light blue line. I will smudge from the outside and then from inside, keeping the perfect round shape of the eye. I can do it by changing the direction of my pencil. I think it looks good. Let's pick the dark color from the fur, go to the fur brush set and pick the soft fur shader. We can see a few hairs on the reference image. Let's paint them too. I will adjust the brush size and paint this way. Let's remove extra hair using the smudge tool. I also want to add more white color to the upper light reflection using the soft brush. I will just paint on it to make it more bright. I'm gonna pick the color from the brown area around the eye and select the dog fur highlighter. Let me paint on this area slightly, going from left to right. And then smudge it using the soft fur brush. I'm making strokes in both directions for better blending of colors. And going from one side of the eye to another. Let me make a few adjustments 
and then we will proceed to the second half of the dog's head. I will fix the eye shape just a tiny bit using the soft brush set a smudger. This eye is almost finished. We'll continue with the other one now. To save some time, I will do the following for the second eye. Make sure I'm on the right layer, go to selection and in the freehand mode I will circle the eye. Then click copy and paste in this menu. Go to transformation and flip horizontal. After that, move the eye to the left. You can even bring up the sketch layer to see where to put the eye better. I will turn it off. Go to eraser and pick the soft brush. I will erase the areas around the eye. On top and at the bottom. After that, we can go and merge it with the painting layer. I will set the smudge tool as the soft brush and smudge the areas around the eyes, but not touching the greenish and bluish highlights. Of course, it would be much better if we drew the second eye from scratch, as it is on the sketch, and you can totally do it if you have time for that. But what I'm gonna do to change its look is first change the shape of the lower light reflect by means of the smudger. We can widen or narrow it down by changing the direction of the smudging brush. Then I will pick the base dark color from the eye Go to brushes and pick the soft brush. I will paint over the small greenish reflection. Go back to the smudge tool and use it to change the shape of this lightest reflection. I will make it more like a square. Again, I'm reminding you that we are painting a bit simplified version of the dog eyes. In this particular tutorial, we are more focused on painting the fur and checking out my fur brushes. Maybe I will make a separate tutorial for painting dog and cat eyes. Anyway, I want to make one more minor change in the eye. For that, I will pick the color from this reflection and select the soft fur highlighter. Lower the size and opacity and paint slightly here. Now the eyes look a bit different. We are done with the eyes for now and we can continue working on the fur. I will pick the brown color from here, go to the fur brush set and pick the soft fur shader. Let's darken the areas close to the white fur, as we see on our photo. I will darken it more intensively close to the corner of the eye. Let's open the brush library and select the soft fur brush. I will lower the size and paint with it here.
then switch to the same brush in the highlighter mode. Increase the size and opacity and paint over. Lighten in this area and at the same time add in the soft fur texture. Again, I can control the brightness by changing the amount of pressure I put on my pencil. Let's go to the smudge tool and I will blend the white furry edge with this light brown that we just made. After that, I will pick the light color from top of the head and go to grab the soft fur shader. Let me increase the size a bit and draw in between the white hairs that we made with the dog fur highlighter before. We are killing a few birds with one stone. First of all, we are shading the forehead and making the white strands pop up. Second of all, we are adding the texture with fine hairs. I'm looking at the photo and seeing which parts of the forehead need to be darkened more. I find this work very relaxing as well. And as they say, there is no limit to perfection. You can always lighten or darken the areas by switching between different brushes and the smudger. There is a huge space for your creativity and imagination as well. Anyway, as I said before, we have a reference image that is here to show us the location of shadow and highlight. I continue painting with the same brush and same color on another area and it actually looks not bad. But let me pick the light brown color from the cheek and change the brush to soft fur highlighter. I will soften the transition between two colors and then highlight this brown area, adding fine soft hairs. Let's grab soft fur shader and darken some more parts on the forehead. On the left. Then pick the light color from here and switch back to highlighter. This time I will be adding the white hair on the side. and go all over the forehead to paint the soft white fur on it. Also highlight the fur here, close to the eyes. Now we will repeat the process of texture in the dark area under the eye. If you remember what we did, you can pause the video and check yourself by doing it on your own. I will begin with the dog fur shader, making the strokes from the eye outwards, following the direction of hair growth.
Let me handle the small problem here on the eye. Smudge tool is the best solution. While I have it selected, I will also smudge the furry area around the eye a little. After that, I will go for the dog fur highlighter, if you remember. And I will be using it on the outer edges of the dark strands. Lower the opacity for better control of the brightness. Next step is to change the brush for the soft fur shader. And I will be adding the soft furry texture on the same dark area. Above the eye as well. Finally, we need the soft fur highlighter. To lighten the outer edges and blend all the colors inside that area. Let's pick this light brown color from the cheek. As I have the highlighter selected, I can paint here straight away. Then pick the color from the lower part of the head and continue painting to left side. Lower the size and go a little up. The puppy looks alive even with this amount of fur, with the eyes and the nose. Ok, let me pick the dark brown shade from the forehead and switch to the soft fur shader. I will work on the forehead a bit more, darkening the upper parts between the white strands. I can see more dark areas on the right side of the forehead on the reference photo. Let's do it on the painting too. I will set the smudge tool to soft fur brush. And soften some borders between the colors for better blending and natural look. I think this small area needs a bit of adjustments. I will pick this dark grey color from the highlighted part and go along the edge with the soft fur highlighter. Picking the brown color to go a little down with same brush. A bit of smudging on the edge.
under the eye and it looks great now let's work on this big white area I will pick the color from it open the brush library and select the soft fill highlighter from the fill brush set let me increase the size and add the soft white hairs following the direction from the nose outwards to the left and to the right short strokes on the sides first then right from the nose painting in the same direction it is getting very fluffy Don't know if you recognized it or not, but this brush is actually a modified version of the Procreate Sable brush. I loved its soft structure, but I didn't love how it behaved while painting. So I changed many settings of this brush to make it work as I want and make it suitable for realistic fur painting. Let's be careful close to the nose and I think we can even paint over this gray area that we defined for the mouth we will paint it with the fur brush again later Let me go with the short strokes around the lower edge to distinguish the head from the neck. And then I will paint more white hairs here on top. On the other side too. It is so cute, isn't it? Final touches on the nose. In this part of the video, we will work on the second ear. Let me zoom. Pick the color from this brown part and go to the brush set to grab the dog fur shader. I'm making these curly strokes. We can go a bit darker on this part close to the head. Then switch to the dark grey and paint some hairs going down. I will paint here slightly and also on top of the ear. After that, we should go for the dog fur highlighter and add some lighter strands that pop up from the ear. I'm changing the size for a bit of diversity. Let's smudge them a little on the tips with the soft fur brush.
Let me pick the light brown color from the lower part of the cheek. I think this dog fur highlighter is what we need. I will add some hairs of this color as well with low pressure on the pencil in order not to make them too bright. And I will also smudge some of them with the soft fur brush. It is a very captivating process. I love seeing how the flat colors turn into soft furry textures. And we are getting closer and closer to the complete painting. Let's pick some shade of brown from the ear and select the soft fur highlighter. I will highlight some areas. Maybe lower the opacity a little to make it less bright and not press too much on the pencil. The brush is very pressure sensitive. I am switching between the brush and the smudge tool again to make it look more natural. You can totally make your own fur pattern on this ear as well. And I'm really excited to see your paintings for this tutorial. Maybe after you learn how to use these brushes, you can paint your own dogs. I know there are many dog owners among my Instagram friends. And I love dogs too. Even though I own a cat. He is a big inspiration for me. Now let's move a little down and start working on this dark area under the ear. I will pick the color from it and first go for the dog fur shader. Let's paint a few strands to this side. We can even paint a few more from here outwards. Switch to the same brush in the highlighter mode and continue painting with low pressure. Let's go lighter with this color. I will lower the opacity and increase the size. Paint from different directions. I'm referring to the photo of course but still painting in the way where I like how it looks on the canvas. It doesn't have to match with the reference 100%. Our aim is to paint the cutest puppy. Let me pick the color from between the strands and change the brush for the soft fur highlighter. I will add some soft hairs to give it a more of a furry and fluffy texture. Let me also pick the shader and darken some areas between the strands slightly. The fur on this area looks a bit different from the fur on the head. It is more messy and has a bit different structure. We should try to recreate it using the tools that we have. These are the brushes in both lighter and darker modes and the smudge tool that we can use to fix whatever goes wrong.
When using the brushes, I don't set the opacity to maximum value, in order not to make the colors too bright. Better keep it somewhere in the middle of the slider. I will work on it a little more. And now it looks fine. Let's pick the light color from here and add more light hairs with the highlighter. We can see lots of white hairs on the reference as well. Let me smudge this part just a tiny bit. Let's check. Here I will add a bit more of dark hairs using the soft fur shader. In short, I am switching between the fur brushes and smudging until I get the desired look. Let me grab the light color near the nose. I want to select the soft fur shader to paint the cute little mouth. For that I will turn on the sketch. Let me zoom the image and move the reference a bit closer. I will make lots of tiny strokes with low pressure and low brush opacity. Looking at the reference and following the sketch. Due to the low opacity, we have to make more strokes, but at the same time it will make softer transitions between the colors. I just can't stand how cute it is. After a few more strokes, I will change from the brush to the smudger to blend the dark edges with the white fur. Let me lower the size a bit and I will slightly smudge the edges of the dark fur. Going back to brush. There is a kind of a tiny line here in the middle that goes a little down. And from that line I will go to the left and to the right. Let's turn the sketch off and check. We are repeating same process over and over again until it starts to look like the reference photo. Let's increase the size and paint slightly a little below the mouth. Then smudge its edges. Going up and down and from left to right. I think we can make it a bit darker. Let me smudge a bit more on this line. 
and I will switch back to the brush. Let's increase the opacity to make the fur a bit brighter. But I will paint, still not applying too much pressure. Go down on this line and to the sides. After that, I will smudge it again. Let me check. A bit of smudging on the lower part. And a little bit here. Some final touches and it is done. Now let's pick the brown shade from this side. Then go to the brush set and pick the dog fur shader. Let's see what we have here on the photo. We should darken this part at first. I'm making these curls and go a bit down with the second row. It is also dark near the head and here as well. Let's go for the highlighter now. I just hope the names of the brushes and the way I'm switching between them while drawing is not confusing for you. I tried my best to make the process exciting and enjoyable. Let's find some different shade to diversify the colors. I'm painting slightly and we can observe how furry the puppy is getting on this part too. I'm making some of the strokes longer, some of them are shorter. I'm not actually repeating the reference, I'm just making it look lively and realistic. Let's also get this shade of light brown and paint more. I think we can add this fur on the opposite side too. Then pick another light color and paint more fur. I'm gonna change the brush to soft fur and paint these hairs that go to the side. Then smudge them a little. Let's smudge here too. And it is complete. We have not much left to be painted. So let's work on the chest and it's time to try some other brushes from the new set. I will pick this white color and go to the set. There is this curly brush, let's select it. It creates the soft curly underfur texture, but it's not enough for us. 
there are some other brushes that we haven't tried yet. Let's begin with the shade changer, a darker one. I will lower the opacity and start painting with this brush, making circles to imitate the messy hairs. Even though we have the white color selected, the strokes look brown because of the brush's blending mode. This brush has a unique structure and it looks very different from the two previous brushes that we used on the head. It is a combination of rough fur and fine hairs, also includes some soft particles. This brush can be also used to paint human hair. And same as for the previous brushes, I also made three types for it. Basic color, multiply and screen modes. And it will also work great in combination with the soft fur brush, even when painting human hair. Now let's change the brush into same kind but with the light effect. I will lower the size. And when we paint with the brush, the color is getting lighter. Let me paint on the side. And I will go a bit down here. Working on this area same way as we did with this brush in the darker mode. It's getting volume and a bit of furry texture as well. I hope to demonstrate the new brushes in other realistic paintings in one of my future videos. Or maybe I will make like a short video guide on how to use and combine different brushes from the set when it will be finished. And when I have enough brushes of different kinds. After we finished painting with this brush, we should switch to the smudge tool, set to soft fur. I will make softer transitions between the colors on the neck under the head. By changing the direction, I can also change the ratio of colors. Maybe I keep saying same things a lot, but on the other hand, it may help you learn them faster. We need to soften this white edge too and make the transition less obvious and more natural. Smudge tool is also the best one to be applied for this purpose. We should totally do the same on the opposite side. I'm changing the size to be more accurate and reverse on some areas. Here I will smudge the edges 
in words. And make a few adjustments on the neck. Finally, let's pick the soft fur highlighter and add these hairs all over the chest. It is getting fluffy. Here we can smudge it. Then continue painting. Let's stretch these side strands of white fur on the dark one. And I will work more on the edges. Time to paint the whiskers. I will create a new layer for them. Let's go to the brush set and pick the single hair brush. Let me move the picture. I will set the brush size to 15% and start painting. I think we can lower the size a little. I will paint a few hairs going to the left side, then a few going down, and some of them will go to the right side. This cute puppy on the photo has many, so we should paint them same way. I will add some more on the left side. To make them more visible, we can go to the layers and duplicate it, then merge. We can even merge it with the painting layer. Then go to the smudge tool, set a soft fur brush. And I will carefully smudge the roots of the whiskers one by one. This way we are making it look more realistic. Let's smudge the ones under the mouth. And the ones that grow on the right side as well. According to the sketch, the puppy is ready. But looking at the reference photo now, I'm thinking it will be better if we add dark fur on the right side. It won't take much time, but will definitely make the painting much prettier. I will pick the color from this part of the fur. Go to brushes and select the dog fur brush. I will lower the size and paint these curls, not applying much pressure on the pencil. The strokes are going the way so that they begin from where the white fur ends.
let me go a little up and paint a few bigger strands. As you can see, painting a realistic furry dog needs time. The more you practice, the faster and easier it will go. Now let's get the smudger that is set as soft fur brush and soften the transitions between the white and the dark fur. I'm changing the direction to blend the edges better. After that, I will go to the brushes and pick the dog first shader. I will just make a few black strokes on the dark area. Go down this way. And a little to the left. Then switch to the highlighter. Without changing the color, I will lighten some strands on the dark side. Perhaps it will take you some time to get used to these brushes and their properties. But with time, you will start to feel where to lower the opacity or where to change the size, etc. Of course, if you like the brushes and want to keep on using them in your future work. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts about this set and this video tutorial. I will lighten a few areas more and then change the brush to soft fur highlighter. Let me pick some shade of brown and continue working on the side, adding more fine hairs with this brush. I'm painting on the white fur too, to make the softer transitions. The part under the ear will remain dark, because there is a shadow coming from the head. We are almost there. A few final touches and the cute realistic puppy is ready. There we have our adorable realistic puppy drawing. I hope that's been helpful. Like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications and tag me in your Instagram posts. You can also support me on Patreon and access Patreon-only content. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching. See you soon.